And this is the IPFS All Hands Call for March 5th. And Lytle is the moderator. But we can maybe start with hellos. If anyone's new and wants to say hello, let us know what you get up to, what you're working on, and especially how you heard about this meeting, because we're trying to figure out how to welcome more people and make sure people know about it. Oh, and where you are in the world. So Lytle, I'll let you call out people. Oh, I, I don't feel very good with calling out, so maybe if anyone wants to just say something. <laughs> I see Eric raising his hand. Eric, is that all? How about this? Can you hear Hi. me now? Yeah. yeah. Hi there. All right. Cool. Uh, I'm Eric from Andiet. We recently uh, started helping out with uh, Protocol Labs on uh, some projects, and we're uh, excited to be here. Lynn, Nathan, and uh, Lynn, Fritzy, and Heather are also from the team. So join in for the first time. Anyone else wants to say hi? Can you see me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, so my name is Pierre and I work for Parity Technology and I've been working on the Rust port of Flip P2P. And you see, this is also my first time here. So I had a real one. All right. Anyone else wants to say something? Say hi. Um, hi, I'm Lynn. Eric introduced me, but I work at India. I do design and development. And um, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. So cool to meet you all. All right. I see that we have, uh, yeah, we have uh, notes. One second, I'll switch myself to, to the notes and see what's the agenda for today. <laughs> uh, so one second. Perfect. Okay, so I think, uh, do we have anything uh, for the agenda? Maybe we can, uh, we can like start, start with yeah, pictures. While yeah, let's stuff. let's start with uh, uh, with uh, JS IPFS node uh, deployed uh, by Victor. And if anyone else has uh, any new agenda items, uh, go to to the URL. <laughs> Uh, to the Volker's URL and, and add it. Victor? Sorry, I was a bit confused of where to put my, my thing. Um, so, uh, JS IPFS so far hasn't really been run in our infrastructure, so we've been missing some details about the stability and stuff like that. Um, so now I've done a first deployment of the first JS IPFS gateway. So if you access this URL that I put in the in the notes, you should be able to see a, a dashboard uh, that shows the number of peers connected, the amount of bandwidth, the load average of the instance where it's running, and the memory uh, memory usage currently. Um, so this is still very early. Uh, it's missing a lot of details. I'm very sorry about the dogs in the background. Um, and then in the issue that I put in the link as well, there is more information. And if you have any ideas of details that we should log in our infrastructure about this, uh, about the JS IPFS nodes, please write them so we can add the details. Um, and then in the future, we will deploy more nodes so we can see how they are together and stuff like that. That's it. Any questions? Uh, it does not seem like. Sorry, I was uh, on the separate screen. So, did anyone raise any hand for a question or 
can we go all right sorry uh, yeah so the next uh, item on the agenda is uh, ipfs 0.4.14 but i'm not sure uh who sorry, will that's be... <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah so we've got a new release um ready to get out the door it's been a while uh, this one has a lot of improvements and memory fixes and a few new features um we're just blocking on one final pr we want to get in for before we cut our lease candidate, but after that, we're gonna start moving. Um, you can take a look at the change log that's pending. Let me post that in the issue. But there's a lot. It took me like a few, several hours to just go through the changes that are in this one. Um, the biggest delay that was being that was causing this is that we refactored the uh, uh, command API library and that caused several different bugs and little small things that took a while to flush out. Um, but we've pretty sure we've got most of them now and are moving forward on that. Victor, where should I paste this? Or not Victor. Lido, where should I paste this? Oh, like uh, to the crypt part, right there. ending okay. with MG. <laughs> we had like two. I think the one with MG is there. Got it. Sweet. All right. Do we have any questions to this item, Rob? Um. It might be, I just haven't been around for long enough, but is, is part of that refactoring, pulling stuff out into that separate Go commands repo? Uh, yeah. Cool, okay. I've been trying to map for myself how, because there's the, the commands repo, and then there's like another thing, and then there's the stuff that's in Go IPFS, and trying to map how those totally yeah. relate to each other. So there's like, the, the new stuff has been pulled out. There's still some legacy stuff. Uh, in the Go IPFS repo, um, as we we didn't want to do it all at once because that would have been like a twenty thousand line change log, um, so we didn't do that. We left it so there's some code using some commands using the old code, which is like a, a legacy mapping layer that maps onto the new code. But we're gonna progressively rewrite the commands to use the new stuff, and as we go, we'll be able to delete most of the old stuff. Awesome. I might bug you for more details on like chat or something later. For the notes, what's the what is the repo that these commands are being moved to? The ones that are being moved. The command library is going to um, be go ipfs commands or cmds, I guess. What? Uh, is is go cmd dash kit also part of that? Yeah, so that's like utilities that are used by the um, commands library. Victor? Is, is there still issues, bugs that you will fix before doing the release candidates, or is it frozen now? Uh, it's frozen now. Okay, it seems like we don't have any uh, questions for this one. Uh, and we can move to another. I think, Victor, you have yet another one. Yes, since David is not here, um, there have been a new release of JS IPFS version 0 0.28, um, which has improvements for spawning, spawning demons, uh, PubSub is now easier to use directly from the P2P, so it doesn't have to be through only IPFS. Uh, there is some improvements to the CLI as well. Some more examples. There is a shutdown endpoint now for turning off the daemon if you need to turn it off remotely and stuff like that. Very exciting is IPFD support for Bitcoin and Zcash, which I uh, think Volker has been working on, which is very nice to, to see. 
uh, we are now testing JSI PFS with Jenkins, which uh, was uh, a lot of work, but now it's working, and now we have fast builds. Uh, the multiplex lib P2P stream boxer, multiplexer uh, is now official, has a specification, and we are continuing with the dev team weekly syncs that we now started to do each week as well after the all hands hierarchy. And that's like a summary of it. You can see the full change log by going to the, the link I put in the, in the notes. Do we have any questions to, to this uh, JS APFS release? For the notes, what was the Zcash thing? It just flew by too fast. So IPLD uh, now supports Bitcoin and Zcash. Natively in the shipped copy of JSIPFS? Uh, it should be via, together with the IPLD resolvers, but Volker can probably talk more about it. Yes, so it's in the, so in the current JSIPFS release, there's resolvers for Bitcoin and Zcash. And they're actually shipped with every copy of JSIPFS? Yes. OK. OK. Uh, I don't see any raised hands, so let's well, move I, to. I yeah. still have a question with that then. So is that okay. eventually are those resolvers? I mean, the, the whole idea with IPLD is that many people will create resolvers and ship them on their own and not all nodes will support all resolvers. So is there like a trajectory for moving in that direction that people can pull down and support the resolvers that they want to support on their node? Uh, I so think I'm, Victor was first. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly how we will be in the future, but my guess would be that we support some defaults that will be included in the in the distributions themselves, but then you can add more support dynamically to your own runtime if you need it. As far as I understand. Okay, I think Volker agrees. Uh, Rob, um, just sort of following on with that, is there a clear list anywhere of of what resolvers are built in right now, and also on that trajectory question, like? a plan for what ones are planned to be built in in the future? Marco? I think there is a, on some website, there is a list of the current resolvers. But I don't think it's up to date. And um, I only, I only wear that the Bitcoin and the Zcash were the ones that were um, missing on the JavaScript side. So now the, we have the same resolvers on the Go side as well, on the JavaScript, as well as on the JavaScript side. Okay. Do, could you stick the if you could you stick a link to that list of resolvers into the notes? Uh, also, does does anyone is there anyone on the call who wants us to explain what IPLD resolvers are? There are a bunch of people who maybe don't know what that. It's a, it's a relatively new term. If you if you want it, all right. Peter wants it. Who wants to take a stab at explaining what an IPLD resolver is? All right, Volker. All right. Um, as, as I'm the one who is responsible for the IPLD resolvers, I should be able to explain it. So, um, actually, so. Um, to increase the confusion a bit is what we're talking about is IPLD resolvers and the project was called JS IPLD resolver which got recently for the new IPFS release renamed to just JS IPLD. So when you now talk about IPLD that is what the uh, resolvers used to be that's the main point of it and what it is so IPLD is about um, yes storing some data, linking it up. So it's the interplanetary linked data thing. And the idea behind the resolvers is that you um, 
if you have your own format, like for example, Bitcoin, you just need to implement a very small API to make it work with your format. And then there is higher level APIs in IPLD. And you can then use those higher level APIs and you don't need to take care about the rest basically. And then you can use IPLD that just traverses all the formats. So you can, for example, store something in Git and then have in your you know, commit message a reference to some Bitcoin block. And then you can just load up the Bitcoin block if you have a resolver for it and just uh, keep on traversing there. So it's basically the resolvers are just an abstraction on top of your data format. Um, all right, so this is what I would say. Any further questions? And the main examples we have so far are Git and now Bitcoin and Zcash. So you could have stuff that's in IPFS mixed with stuff that's in Git and stuff that's in Bitcoin and stuff that's in Zcash and you can reference it all using IPLD and resolve it all using IPLD resolvers. But those are just the beginning of the mountain of resolvers. Yeah, Volker. Yeah, and, it's, and there's also, which is an important one, there's also the CBOR resolver. So CBOR is a binary format of JSON. So it can store basically any JSON data you want. It's also an important one. All right. Do we have uh, any remaining uh, concerns, questions? Okay, I think we can move to to demo, and uh, demo will be done by Mache. So Mache, go on. And so a few months ago, I created the software LibKDP Node Trust, which basically enables any um, browser to talk to a random node that's running on a computer. So now not only the bootstrap nodes can be connected from the browser, but also the browser can now connect to normal nodes because the problem with that was that uh, WebSockets, uh, uh, a normal WebSocket server is insecure and so the browser does not let you connect to that directly. And I had to find a way to use Let's Encrypt certificates to make it possible to connect to that. And now I'll do a quick demo of um, that. Um, so in the terminal is the uh, 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 server running the libpnp node trust client and this is um, the browser. Now I uh, can mark this, it connects to the libpnp node trust um, uh, server which uh, issues the certificates. This is where this node got its certificate from. Now I can enable discovery and it will now discover um, yeah, the server of our fluid sub and connect to it uh, using a Let's Encrypt certificate. And it does not require installing any certificate authority or special certificates for that. And it also uses a special um, address to DNS uh, domains uh, which directly resolve to the IP address which is also where these certificates are issued for. And so those for example, so for example this address resolves to this domain and they are, can be converted to a and yeah that's basically all this module does. It enables browsers to connect to um, nodes that uh, run on computers. So the bootstrap server does not get overloaded. That's all from my side. Have you got any questions or did you not understand anything? Um, Matt? All right, so you said that the use case is to allow JS IPFS nodes to connect to non-browser nodes, is that right? And if so, um, what are the obstacles that you're overcoming? What were the obstacles to making those connections that are now addressed by Node Trust? Um, so uh, the problem was that uh, 
normal JSIPFS nodes run WebSocket servers, and if you are running JSIPFS on an HTTPS page, then uh, you've got the problem because you cannot connect to a WebSocket server over HTTPS. And Node Trust automatically issues certificates for those WebSocket uh, servers, so browsers can connect to um, these JSIPFS nodes directly without the bootstrap server and without PHP circuit. Mm, um, like you, you mentioned like, uh, like there is this uh, dynamic uh, DNS mapping. Uh, is it like a third party service uh, or is it just like convention? Um, I have written a DNS server and that's uh, serving DNS requests and converting the uh, IP part in the um, domain where it says IP4 8888, for example, into a normal DNS A response with that IP address. Okay, so this happens uh, on the fly, right? Yes. Okay. Mm, any more questions to, to this demo? I don't see any raised hands, so I think, uh, thank you, Maciej, for your demo. And let me quickly check our agenda. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Okay, I see there's a reminder uh, that there's now a JSIPFS weekly call after this all hands call. Um, but I don't think there's anything else added since I've been looking at this. Um, is there anything anyone wants to add or ask? That would be a good time. That well, we, we've been also been playing with the idea of including time in these calls for like just Q&A, sort of anyone to ask anything. So we might want to experiment with that if people don't have further items. But I saw Peter raised his hand. I just want to introduce myself. Can, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, uh, thanks. <laughs> um, I'm brand new to this space. Um, I'd like to help out in any way I can. I think the fastest way I can help out and learn uh, is through documentation. Uh, if anybody has any work items for documentation that you need help on, um, let me know. I don't know if this is the right call to, to ask that on or if it's the next one. Um, I'm actually working right now on doing a lot of research work around what needs to be documented better and how to structure it. Um, so I, I try and be on IRC fairly regularly. Um, I'm Mr. Ogrog, M-R-0-G-R-O-G -O -G on there. Um, or uh, get at me on GitHub also. Uh, there's a new project called IPFS slash docs on GitHub, which is where we're starting to tool around with building a new docs focused site. Um, but it's not very fleshed out with exactly what it's gonna be yet. Um, and so uh, bug me about it. Uh, it's still in a very like fuzzy phase. Um, and I'm working actually this week, today in particular, on starting to publish uh, some of my notes about what I learned from like talking to people and interviewing people about uh, what kind of issues new folks run into and that kind of stuff. Um, okay. But yeah. Thank you. I'll reach out to you then on uh, IRC. So I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Nathan Fritz. I'm with And Yet. Um, and one of the projects that we're going to be doing is uh, a blog platform B app. And so this week, my goal is to get a data layer, data layer going for, for all of the metadata. And so I'm looking at using uh, pure CRTD and having signed ops and, and, go, and then checking against the ACL tables and all of that. So I want to get all of that um, working this week. And then Andy has a week off for a team week next week. And then after that, we've got, uh, then after that, I want to hit the ground running, actually making the VM. So, um, yeah, that's what we're up to. 
you know, were one of the things that we're up to. Uh, and I just wanted to say hi. Uh, are you going to be um, on IRC or other places where I might bug you about what kind of stuff you're running into live and starting to, to do this? So I'm in Slack and I can be you know, in IRC. I, I uh, didn't even know of an IRC channel. I guess I should have. So yeah, I can I can join up IRC. I'll be Fritzy in there. Cool. I'm on, I'm on both, so wherever. But I would love to, like, if you have time at the end of this week, uh, mm -hmm. Talk to you about like how your first week working on it's been before you're gone for a week. Okay, yeah, uh, I did start last week and I was using um, mostly uh, working on a custom type for YJS, um, uh, but because I was just using signed data rather than signed operations, um, like uh, validating that the user actually had permission to delete an object, say was a bit of a problem without modifying YJS. So um, I ended up moving to Peace, Pierce, the RTD. And uh, yeah, so I'll let you, I'll uh, be in touch, Bob. Thanks. And I'll probably poke you for documentation on stuff too. Poker? Um, I, I just want to say that the uh, JS IPFS call is after this call, which means it's uh, 18 hours UTC and it's on a different channel, basically. So that just be aware of. Um, I've posted it on the crypt pad as well, if anyone is interested. Great. Anyone else with requests for help, either open issues that they want to call to people's attention or questions? So I posted a couple items in the note or in the chat. Um, in Phoenix, we've been having some hackathons and we call them blockathons. And we've been using sort of a blockchain with uh, training wheels, or I call it a blockchain bicycle, which is called Naive Coin, which is how to build a blockchain or use a blockchain in 1500 lines of JavaScript or less. And I was wondering, uh, Juan had talked about doing a uh, demonstration of how to build a blockchain using IPFS. And I was wondering if anybody has done that. I know about a year or two ago, um, I think it's Christian Lundquist posted an article on building a blockchain using IPFS. But I was wondering if there was any sort of demo uh, that we could reference and start to build blockchains and use cases using IPFS. And if there aren't, that's fine. Um, I just wondered if anybody's aware of a resource like that. Maybe Jeremy or Hector, do either of you have thoughts on where someone would look if they're interested in building a blockchain on IPFS? Um, yeah. Um, depending on like what exactly you mean by that. Um, I wrote something up lately that was just kind of a hack I did. That's um, writing a blockchain on IPFS. Here, let me post this in chat. There, that's... Um, Perfect. It it's roughly does the thing. It's, I think it's just interesting to look at in terms of like how to structure things. That's perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. I mean, I haven't looked at it yet, but just based on the name, I'm sure that's what I'm looking for. So thank you. And you saw the link that Victor pasted? Yep. Uh, Saw it. Anyone else with requests for help? Help wanted, or we could wrap up this call and JS people can come back in 25 minutes. Okay, I don't see any hands up. All right, well, then, thank you everyone for joining us.
and we'll see you all online. Bye. Thank Ciao. you, everybody. Bye.